So yesterday, there were a lot of Ravens fans that definitely tuned in, and just a lot of football fans, period, that tuned in to the latest episode of Uninterrupted uh, because it featured our guy Lamar Jackson. And we always want to see what he about to say because, you know, he don't really speak too much, especially at length. Uh, so it was nice hearing him be able to just really chop it up and be himself because it wasn't like he was speaking to the media, so he had to be, no, he was more laid back, more relaxed, more chill. But there were also a lot of headlines that had been coming out yesterday, uh, particularly about the black quarterback in this day and age uh, and the sort of racial bias that there is against the black quarterback in the NFL. Um, and then Adam Schefter. Uh, today, Adam Schefter put out a headline saying Ravens Lamar Jackson said racial bias against black quarterbacks is still there in the NFL. And the link was to an article that uh, Ravens own Jamison Hensley. Uh, well, he doesn't work for the Ravens, but he covers the Ravens for ESPN. Uh, it linked his article talking about that part of the episode. But Lamar, he quote tweeted that and he said, that was not my response to that specific question. Don't start that, Adam. And he did, of course, the little eye rolling emoji. So he's just saying, look, like, look, hold up, Shefty. That's not what I was referring to. Um, but let's actually listen to that part of the show uh, so you can hear exactly what he was saying that he was referring to. Uh, and just to give you a quick reference, LeBron James was talking about how he has so much haters. And sometimes even before games, just to get in the zone, to get prepared, he'll actually go on social media and he will look for what haters are saying about him because so many people always doubt him, but he just loves to prove him wrong. He loves proving him wrong. Uh, so LeBron James had just finished talking about that and let's listen to the rest. So, again, they were just recapping what happened to Lamar Jackson. Of course, we know Heisman winner broke all these crazy records at Louisville as their quarterback. Throwing records, rushing records, just everything. He just killed it. But at the combine, a lot of these teams would ask, hey, you want to work out as a wide receiver? You want to play something other than quarterback? And it's like, man, this dude just came from winning a Heisman. Could have actually won two Heismans. But they're like, oh, you, we, we, yeah, that's cool what you did. But you want to play something else? That's why they said it was disrespectful. And then they asked on the show Interrupted. They asked Lamar, like, why did, why did they ask you that? Now, and you know Lamar, like, he knows the camera's on. Like, even though this is not normal media Lamar, but he knows the cameras are on and he knows like with him it's crazy because he has to always watch what he says because anything that he says, a lot of people like to twist his words. They like to not even just his words, but they just like to twist stuff when it comes to Lamar Jackson, period, period. They just love twisting stuff around and changing stuff. So he has to be extra careful. So he took the high road and I appreciated that because, you know, like he. He can't always be real. You know, it's like, you know, he want to say some, something, but he just can't because he's him. So they asked him, like, why, why, would, why do they do that? Why do they make you do that? Why do they try to make you do that? He said, I don't know. He said, I don't know. I have no idea. But we, we know he got an idea. Anyway, let's keep going. You do know why. Well, the truth is, there's a lot of history with them not wanting black guys to play quarterback. So that was the statement right there. There's a lot of history with them not wanting black guys to play quarterback. We have seen it time and time again where they want to change, especially if, it, if a guy is deemed a black, if it's a black quarterback and he's fast, then they're like, oh, well, hey, that's an athlete. That's not a court. That's an athlete. Even the guy, uh, I think right now, Malik, what's his name? Malik Willis, I believe. Well, it, the reports have been coming out saying that people are surprised how much information he can retain. Uh, and I know, like, it's happened to guys like uh, Terrell Pryor. He was another one. Um, he, he ended up switching to wide receiver. He played quarterback for, like, a little bit, but he ended up switching to wide receiver. Uh, and it also happened, oh, there was another one. Ooh, 
I cannot think of the, his name off the top of my head right now. Not Cardell Jones. Ah, I, I can't think of the guy's name off the top of my head. I think he played for uh, Ohio State. It was a quarterback, and he ended up switching. Not Braxton. Oh, I can't think of his name. Y'all, y'all will know who I'm talking about. But he was a quarterback in college, and then he ended up trying to switch to receive. And I think he went to the Texans. But anyway, let's keep going. But that that was the, this is the statement that Lamar was replying to. That again about the black guys. Them not really wanting black guys to play quarterback. They can't think quick enough. This, this, like, this is going way back, 70s, 80s, and it's still, it's dying Every day, off. give me more reasons to. It's dying off, but it's still there. It's still there. It's still That's there. why I need that championship. That's why I need that championship. And boom, that was it. That was it. That's why he said he needs that championship. Because since a lot of people are saying that they, they, they don't want black guys to play quarterback, that's what he was responding to and saying that's why he needs that championship. To, to just show people like, hey. We, we can do this, too. We can retain information. We can call plays. We can do this thing, too. We can make it happen. So it just seemed like he just wants to prove a lot of people wrong. Uh, and just really going over the show yesterday, uh, some things that I saw from there, just to start from the beginning, uh, Lamar talked about how he, obviously watching the Super Bowl, he would have rather been in it. Um, and he said he felt like the Rams were going to win from jump since they had been there before. So he felt like that experience was going to help him. Uh, he talked about Aaron Donald, said with Aaron Donald, you have to watch him every play. Uh, but he said he doesn't talk to his teammates like, oh, you got to watch AD on every play because he said that's something that they already know. So he gives them that dignity and gives them that respect. Like, y'all know you got to watch Aaron Donald because they, they should know. Like, everybody knows that. Like, that ain't no shock or surprise or anything like that. Um, but they asked him, what do you think it is that makes Aaron Donald so special? And he said it's his work ethic. Um, now, he also talked about his pregame. What does he do pregame? He said Hollywood every single game before every single game. Hollywood comes and picks him up. Um, but he said he doesn't like being at the stadium too early. He said he usually gets there like an hour early. Um, but he don't like being there too early. That's how I am at the airport. Because I know like for, I know for uh, my mom, like when I remember going to the airport before, so you want to go there like hours early. And that that's smart because the earlier that you are there, especially with the Lions nowadays too, you want to get there. You don't want to get there too late. Um, but if you get there early, like you could chill, you could relax. But if you get there late, like on my time, that's CPT time, um, then you might be rushing. You might be like starting to stress out because you got to wait. But anyway, that's beside the point. Uh, but he said he don't like to get to the, to the uh, I was about to say to the airport. He don't like to get to the games too early. Um, he said that he studies all week, uh, but he said defenses, they don't play him like they play other quarterbacks. And that's when LeBron stepped in. He's like, well, yeah, they try to, they try to do QB contain. And, and I, I love listening to LeBron James speak about football. I love it because you can tell like this guy knows what he's talking about. He knows what he's talking about. And I, I really, I just always really appreciate that. Um, they asked him, like, going into your fifth year, like, what are you trying to do different? What are you trying to change? And he said that um, early on he was more immature, but not necessarily in a bad way, more in, more in a uh, naive and experienced type of way. But he said he just wants to be more mature moving forward. Um, and they asked him if he would consider his career a failure if he didn't win a Super Bowl. And he said, nope. Nope. There was no hesitation on that. Nope. No, it would not be a failure. I was like, oh, OK. And he said because he made it out of his environment. And he talked about how uh, the, a lot of people in his environment, they know how to play football. He said they're ballers, but a lot of them just don't make it out because of the situation. Uh, and he also talked about how LeBron is his favorite basketball player. And then that's why he really wanted to be on the show. Uh, and he talked about wanting to be a billionaire and a champion. He said ever since he was a kid, those are two of the things that um, that. He wanted to he wanted to make happen. Uh, now, there was a part where LeBron, LeBron said, you can't care what people say anymore. You really can't because they're always going to critique everything that you do. And yeah, LeBron and the NBA side. Yeah, he, he knows better than everybody. Uh, and he said he lost himself his first year in Miami when he came down and, and joined the Heat. Uh, he said they, they went to the championship that year and lost. But he also talked about how whether you believe what people are saying about you or not, you can't get caught up in it. Uh, and LeBron, he also talked about how, uh, and we talked about this earlier, how before games he'll go on social media to see what people are saying about him because it fuels him. Uh, and he loves proving people wrong. 
Uh, and then, of course, yeah, he pointed at Lamar and said he knows because they told him he couldn't play quarterback and they wanted him to switch positions. So that was what we were talking about at the beginning of this video. Uh, so we don't need to cover that again. But they also asked him if you ever have to tell coach, like, let me cook. And he said that with John Harbaugh, that Harbaugh wants to win just as bad as he does. Uh, so he really doesn't have to tell him that. He said he's focused, though. Um, he said in his first game, his first game as a starter week one uh, in Miami in 2019, he said Hobbs told him that it would be a lot of noise. And it was because we were loud. Uh, he said the mics might go out. And he, Lamar was thinking that, well, that never happened before. But then it ended up happening. <laughs> but he said that uh, he couldn't hear any of the plays coming in. So, but he got everybody lined up. So he just had to call the plays and whatnot. And they obviously worked because, yeah, you remember the result of that 2019 week one game. Um, now, they did ask, uh, they asked Lamar to call a play right then and there. They said, hey, cause so, so people can have a better understanding of just how difficult it is. Call a play right now. And he was like, no, nah, I ain't about to call my plays right here on TV. No, I ain't, I ain't doing that. Um, but he did end up calling a play. Uh, and, and he also confirmed that he says can if he sees something in the defense that he doesn't like so he can change the play. So I know there have been a lot of questions about audibles and whatnot. Um, now, there, there's, there still is a question about it because we've heard that uh, Greg Roman sends Lamar Jackson to the play with two plays, with two options. I don't know how true this is or not. But we heard that he sends Lamar to the huddle with two plays. So he either has option A or option B. So that's something that we got to look a little deeper into to see how that is. Um, and then one of the last questions that he asked, that he was asked is if he has a, a way that he wants people to feel when they watch him play. He said he doesn't really care how people feel. He said he just wants to go out there and win. That's it. And that's just been with Lamar. That's been the only thing he's been saying for the past four years. He just wants to win. I mean, they, they do do a lot of it when he's in the lineup. But that's it. And he said he wants the opposing fans to be sad and for Ravens fans to just leave out them stadiums happy. And that's what we all want. Every time we go watch the Ravens play, we just want to leave out the stadium happy. Anytime we watch the Ravens play, period, on TV, whether you watch it on the stream, whether you watch it live, you just want to finish the game happy. That's all we really want. Uh, and we get that a lot. And sometimes we don't get it so much, but we get it a lot. But it was, it was cool, man. Y'all make sure uh, you watch it for yourself. It's just always nice hearing uh, professionals uh, professional athletes in a more relaxed, a more calm setting. It's more chill. It's more like, ah, oh, yeah, hey, we, yeah, it's cameras rolling and whatever. But we could be a lot more, <sighs> just vibing. That's it. So appreciate y'all. Love y'all. I hope y'all having a great day. We out.